Here's Brev with Blue Nail Farm. Today I want to talk about when we rebail or rebail in the field, what we need to do when we actually plug up. And this is my techniques and the tools I use. I'm also going to refer to as the, the plunger. I'm going to call it the door. And the reason I'm going to call it the door <coughs> is because when you look inside the baler, you see the knife and the plunger going through, and that's basically the opening that you see, and then you see it shut. But basically, again, the reference I'm making to it is the plunger. So with that said, watch the video. Hopefully you gain something from it, and hopefully it'll help you when you plug up in the field. So I was rebailing. I was down to the last two bales. It's 1130 at night, and I wind up having a big chunk of hay fall into the baler and plug up. So I break a shear bolt off on the flywheel, and here I am trying to get this hay out. And I'm going to show you two tools that'll help you. And I don't care if you're in a field baling or you're doing rebaling, it's all the same problem. You get hay gets in here, gets in where the knives hit, it gets jammed, the door can't shut, it shears the bolt, story over. So the downfall is sitting where I'm at <coughs> is that the hay is obviously jammed in here and I gotta get it out. And I'm having a hell of a time getting it out because I'm only able to pull a little bit by my hands. So there's two tools that you can use. One, the hay hook. I told you in other videos, this is my godsend. This is the go-to go -to tool when it comes down to rebaling or hay baling in general because I use it a lot with the cores. But when I get stuck and I can't pull it out by my hands, I can reach in and start pulling little bits of hay off, <coughs> loosen it up and pulling it out. Another tool that I'll use, I use this in my dump truck and it's basically just to clean up rock and stuff, but it's also a, a little hoe with teeth on it. I can reach in and try to grab out hay. So the biggest trick here is that you also wear gloves because you got tines in the way, a lot of sharp pieces of metal. Your hands are going to get all beat up. And the whole key here is reach in as best you can and just keep playing and digging out hay. And until you can dig it out, and that door will shut, which right now it's jammed in there, I'm just trying to pull out little, little pieces of hay like this and trying to feed it out. So any way you can get in there to kind of break up the hay, and pull it out, it's a slow process. I've been screwing around with this thing for about a half hour. I was using a hay hook problem is I really wasn't getting a lot of bite. I got a little bit of it out, but not as much as I want. This hay is breaking apart pretty easy. So all you need to do is use something like this and just keep playing with it. And uh, it's very aggravating when you plug and it's the downtime of fixing a flywheel, putting a new shear bolt in and basically digging it out. And the downfall of rebaling is I got the stupid rebaler unroller behind me. I'm stuck in between the tines and that's I have no way of moving this around so you know in a field you can have a lot more room to get in here and dive in I don't have that option in the rebailing business so this is an issue this is something you have to deal with once in a while and the more experience you have in rebailing the less likely you have chunks falling but the problem is you know as these bales come apart and this is first cut from last year these bales are coming apart in, in big flakes sometimes and they fall in and that's part, maybe part of the downfall of using a uh, single phase or a single unit where it just unrolls the bale. You know, if you have a fluffer, you st I still see a lot of hay going in these balers. So you still have to control the amount of feed that it takes. And, you know, once in a while I do plug. Today I plug. It's been a long time since I plugged. When I first started, I'd plug a little bit more often because I was trying to learn the baler. But again, these are two good tools. To help you unplug the baler and uh it's just the nature of the beast of doing this you know but downtime sucks and you know last thing i want to do is be sitting out here another half hour you know screwing around trying to get this done but i figured since this happened i want to make a quick video this is how we get the job done and uh, hopefully i can get this cleaned out real quick and continue on so i want to add a little more detail to what happens once we're plugged up and you shear the bolt on the flywheel. First thing you need to do is put that pin back in so you can actually move the flywheel which is going to activate the tines and the plunger. Now your goal here before you start trying to dig something out is that when the plunger goes back it winds up hitting the hay where it's all bound up 
and back actually will shear this bolt. So once it's sheared, once you put that bolt back in, you can move the plunger. And your goal is to take the plunger, which acts like a door, and pull it back, back through the baler. And you can actually open up this arm and see the plunger falling back if you want, um, just by opening up the door. And if you look in, you can actually see the plungers move back. And what it would look like really quick would be right here where the plunger is all the way back to this part. And you can see the plunger sitting in here. And once you have that plunger back, then you know that the door is open and you can go work on your equipment. So overall though, once you get all this done and you're able to dig it out, and you will get it dug out, um, it's not going to take you that long. Uh, generally it takes a half hour sometimes, sometimes it takes five minutes. It all depends on how big the plug is. You know, if you drop a core in there, you know, that's actually easier to get out sometimes than it is when you're stuck between the door. The other thing too is you do not always have to have that completely cleaned out. Sometimes you just need to remove enough of it that you can restart the baler and hopefully the baler will clean itself out. Um, and that's what I did with this case. I wound up still having a little bit of hay in there, but I had enough that I know where I could see the knife and I, once I pulled that back, and I could see where it would come in contact with the hay, and I figured it would clean itself out. The worst thing you would do, you jam back up again, you break another shear pin. But that's why when I do my bailing and rebailing, I make sure I have a lot of shear pins because this does happen probably more than not for an active part that I have to put into. But for the most part, this is part of bailing hay, and it'll happen to you in the field, and it'll happen to you rebailing. But uh, these are just a little bit of tricks to help you get by. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully that was helpful to somebody, especially if you're new at uh, running balers. You know, this is a common thing that you need to be aware of, and you're not going in blind, you know, if something like this happens. Again, thanks for watching.